Welcome back to another Species Profile. In this video, I'm going to be looking at one of my favourite isopods of all time, Amadalidium maculatum, the zebra isopod. Let's just start at the beginning where it all began with its name. Armadillidium is ancient Latin, meaning nothing more than woodlouse, and it took a millennia before French biologist Antoine Rossi catalogued the animal in 1816 and gave it the species name we know now, Maculatum. Incidentally, Rossi's Latin obviously wasn't on point, as Maculatum actually means spotted and not striped, so the direct translation to English is spotted woodlice, so let's all call it the zebra and make things much clearer. And speaking of stripes, it is believed by some scientists that this has evolved as Babesian mimicry, meaning it takes on the appearance of another animal to deter predators. In this case, it would be Glomeris marginata, or the common European pill millipede. If you had the choice of copying another animal to warn off predators, then why not a lion? Once they have your attention, you might want to like this video, subscribe, and then tell me in the comments if you like this series and what other arthropod you would like me to cover next. Instead of evolving like the rest of the smart animals, it decided to just run an update on its breathing system and has gone from full-on gills to tracheal lungs, which still need some form of moisture to enable it to breathe. Unlike most isopods though, this one has updated its system to be a little more efficient and is capable of enduring a much drier environment than most. This ability update has meant that it can be the bane of isopod keepers the world over, and it is often found in other bins, enclosures, and in random places thriving where others would fail. Zebras come in a vast array of different morphs, with yellows, choppers, broken stripes, full black, full white, to name but a few. They hail from southern France and the Mediterranean originally, but due to substrate changes they can also be found as far north as my garden. Being detritivores, they love nothing more than munching on rotting things like wood and leaves. Occasionally they will gnaw on limestone rocks in the wild to gain calcium intake for the chitin armour. When keeping this animal in captivity, all you will need is a plastic storage box that is a quarter filled with substrate, which is nothing more than fertiliser-free cheap compost from a supermarket, mixed with broken, rotten wood and some dead leaves that you can find in any woodland area. Incidentally, you will also be able to find this on our website if we ever get it finished, along with Maculatum themselves. As with most isopods, it is wise to give the animal the option of damp and dry. I like to carpet the surface of the substrate in live moss on one side, and leave the other side bare substrate with a branch, piece of bark, or at a pinch even use cardboard, which they may also eat, that bridges the two sides. Giving the moss a spray once a week is usually enough to quell their moisture demands, but it is also worth having a look midweek to ensure it isn't as dry as a nun's crutch. If other leaves are running low then you might want to also top those up, and make sure you have some form of calcium in there with them to aid with their malting process. Cuttlefish bone, limestone rocks, seashells and even eggshells work to push. Another source could even be snail shells if you're using them in a display setup and don't want a great white ugly lump in your tank. Many keepers give their pets extra fruit and veg as a supply of vitamins that are entirely not required by the isopod and only causes mold, fruit flies and fungus gnats in your enclosure when you're too damn lazy to remove them eating foods. We will, however, in the near future, be supplying an isopod child that is complete with proteins and calciums required by your pet. A bit like Wally's isopod chow at Supreme Gecko. If you're in the USA, you should check this out. The isopods tell me it's yummy. There isn't much more I can say about this species, and there is no point describing something you've been looking at for the past five minutes. They're stripy wood lice. That's all I got. Come back next time for another species profile of something I can be bothered filming, or tell me in the description below what you want me to talk about. Thanks for watching.